Good afternoon, this is Bruce and welcome to my shop <coughs> on this Sunday afternoon. It's uh, a, a nice 28 degrees C at the moment. Uh, we had a bit hotter yesterday, it was 37 out on the road. Um, probably a lot hotter in my jacket on the motorbike. Um, but, you know, a, cool, a cold beer after a while for helps things. Anyway, today we're going to show uh, a getter out and, and thread repairs on a, a locomotive um, steam boiler, the main, the main steam boiler um, man hatch, man, manhole or access hatch, whatever you like to call it. Um, it have four, that it's, a, it's a plate, there's four bolts, uh, four studs sticking up that holds the, um, uh, the safety valve. Now those uh, bolts are all um, worn out and shit. This is a very old piece of plate and it's obviously been on and off a few different um, locos over its time. And uh, what we're trying to do here is to remove, well we've removed those four studs and uh, we've uh, begun the process of tapping new, uh, drilling and tapping new holes. Um, so I'll close up a little bit and I'll show you the process what I went through uh, in trying to get out these um, these studs. So in the first instance what I did was um, I welded welded nuts onto the onto the studs. Uh, this is uh, what was left of the stud. I'd cut I'd cut the, 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 the length of the stud off <coughs> and this was very close to the plate. And I welded those four on and then um, jiggled them around a bit with hammers uh, bashing in both directions um, which I do quite often if you, get, if you get a nut between two and you're bashing between two hammers you could vibrate and vibrate and break that connection and and by doing that you can turn uh, turn the bolt out or loosen it enough so that you, you can then get a spanner onto it you know something some decent sort of spanners uh, not uh, Totally a bomb size, but Bruce size at least. Anyway, um, one of those I did manage to unscrew out, and the other three uh, resisted. So what I did is I flipped the the the, pla the flange over, um, and I drilled holes in the flange with the ro with the with the um, the rotor broach come uh, drill a magnetic drill, and I drilled down through. If we can see it there, I drilled down through the thread, um, just past or just close to past the the thickness of the flange, and then I managed to unscrew them out. So uh, that way, I got three of these studs out. And, uh, there's a the third one there. So I'll show you now down below um, how we're going with all this. Just bear with me and I'll drop the, the, the camera down a bit. Let's have a look and see if we've got... Okay, we can see that now. Yeah, so now that's the flange. Uh, these are the four bolt holes that, um, that, need, that needed to be replaced. So these were three quarter inch bolts and I've gone up to seven eighths there at Whitworth. Uh, most of this locomotive stuff that was built uh, up to the 80s in, in either in England or in Australia were, were Whitworth. Uh, quite often that's the case. Um, so what, what, we, um, what I've done is, is I've taken reference back to, uh, the, to the black books. As I've mentioned on, on quite a few occasions, um, this one is the Fastener Black Book, the first edition. There's now a second edition out. Uh, and this one is the inch edition, which is out in America. Um, and uh, inside they have the charts with uh, all your drilling uh, for tapping. A very quick reference, very, very handy in the workshop. Um, now, also, um, what I have is, is what's called a hot sheet. And this is exactly the same as what's inside the, um, the book and I'll be featuring these uh, in a couple of weeks time of how you can order them from me um, and these are laminated but this particular one is the hot is the hot sheet for the tapping and on the flip side 
It's got speeds and feeds for drills. It's got the hole saw dimensions and cutting feeds, counter boring, um, and locating coordinates, all in this single single A4 sheet, uh, smaller than uh, smaller than a full scap size. So I'll be featuring these, there's quite a few of these available, and I'll be featuring them for uh, for you to be able to purchase them from from uh, through my website, um, which is at the moment in development, so I'll let everybody know when that's actually going to happen. So what we've done, um, we didn't have a taper tap for, um, for the BSW, the 7 8 BSW. So what I've done is I've got a brand new, never used, uh, plug tap BSW 7 8 and I also have a, a, an intermediate Greenfields uh, UNC or NC9. They're both 9 pitch and they both marry up beautifully. In fact, you can't see the difference between the 55 uh, of the 55 degrees of the BSW and the 60 degrees of the UN. So in this case, I, I, opt I got out very lucky with all of the taps and dies I have. I managed to do this. So what I've done is I've used my um, my big P and N. This is not the biggest I have, but this is a number seven B. Uh, and what I, what I want to do here is just um, show you uh, a little tip. Now, the other thing I did was when I when I drilled these holes out, these holes were already drilled out um, quite quite large, uh, about five eighths inch or sixteen mil uh, for the three quarter nineteen mil diameter. Um, so there was not not much left in here. So what I've done is I've used a, the correct drill bit for the, um, uh, for the tapping according to the chart and I've backed off so that it won't grab. Well, I didn't want to grab and, and spin, the, um, spin the mag drill even though this is a two ton magnetic drill but this is pretty old rusty thing so even though it's got a really good grip on it I just I backed off the, um, the drill and uh, so that it wouldn't grab and that worked wonders and that spun out the old whatever's left of the old thread and cut the hole to tapping size so now when i go to do the tapping of course we never forget my black smelly smoky um fluid nice beautiful stuff this really good and um it's been uh, it's, it's a sulfur base a lot of people don't like it um uh, smelly and all the rest of it but I find for, especially for coarse threads, for stainless steel work, um, it, it's great. Now there's two, there's two items here, that just, I'll give the tip also on this. <coughs> when, I, when I start the tapping, I use this little square. I've got one in my, my, uh, my ute, my truck as well. And I always use this to check, to make sure I'm standing straight when it comes to, um, when it comes to hand tapping, put it that way. So, so then with this hole here, I'm going to start, start this hole. Um, I'll get, a, I'll get a, a start on it. Somehow or other it'll start. And just when you're making a movie, it's likely to let you down. But there we go, we're getting a start here now. Now I'll get it down about one and a half threads and then I'll check it with the square. I'll bring the square across the side to see how it's there and at 90 degrees I'll check it with the square there and it's spot on. It's led, it's led in beautifully so there's no problem here. We can just carry on doing our threading. But as normal I will do another couple of threads And I'll check it again. Nothing like checking it a couple of times. I bought it in there. You can't see it, but it's it's, it's pretty well spot on. So I'm happy with that. I'll have to follow through and finish that threading work done. I 
The biggest problem with flanges like this and old steel um, is uh, is the uh, so I'll bring that back up. One of the problems you've got with threading old steel and that sort of thing is that it's burnt, it's been heated, cooled, heated, cooled, heated, cooled over many years <coughs> and over many circulations of it and uh, so it's, it's, it's uh, not conducive to good taps, it it's, can destroy them very quickly. On the other hand, if you don't use a good tap, you're not going to get through it. So um, sometimes if I've got a lot of rusty work to do, I end up having to throw away all those taps and buy new ones. Because <coughs> it's just not, it just, it just takes everything off of it. The rust is uh, the biggest enemy of a thread tap, I would say, and a drill bit and so forth. By the way, Chuck Bomberitos, there's a phone call, I'll get to it shortly. Um, Chuck Bomberito, one of our YouTube uh, developers, um, our group, and um, we go out and support him. This is really, really important. Um, and uh, buy, buy these uh, the shirts from him, the back side of it. Um, so, all of us uh, lads that are going uh, to the bash this year, um, and the YouTube uh, uh, group, we um, uh, we need your support. I'll be coming out with our campaign, both in Australia, Great Britain, and America, to help finance my trip to the bash. Because, of course, it's far more expensive than uh, anybody travelling uh, on, on the on the uh, the US uh, land. So, um, and hopefully you're going to be able to see at least two Australians um, and one other gentleman that is infamous for his um, uh, destroying his machines, eating, uh, making food. Um, and uh, John Mills, we, we uh, requested everybody support us. All that, uh, us, that our core group is 20 of us, uh, roughly 20 of us, and we, we need your support. So thanks very much and we'll be back.